Hey everyone, so I thought I'd do a screencast for um, beginning of our chapter on cell division. So this is chapter 9, sections 1 and 2. And uh, this is going to be on a very important topic in biology, cell division. Uh, so how you take a single cell and duplicate the genetic material inside that cell in order to create a second uh, duplicate or daughter cell. Now, there's a couple of reasons that an organism would do this. We talked about in class how uh, a lot of times organisms will do uh, cell division for repair. Certainly this is something that we do pretty often, right? So if you damage your skin or something happens to the outer layer of your, your body, essentially you're going to want to close that gap to prevent other organisms from getting in and infecting you. So um, repair is a huge mechanism that, use, that uses um, cell division growth especially for multicellular organisms like a lot of eukaryotes. Not all eukaryotes, but uh, for eukaryotes, especially uh, humans, us, you're going to see an instance where uh, life starts off as a single cell. And to become this complicated multicellular organism uh, that is us, that, that is a human, uh, human beings and, and our species, you really have to participate in a lot of cell division, a lot of cell growth early on and in a lot of instances throughout life, um, like for instance, a repair. Now for asexual organisms, like many prokaryotes, uh, you're going to see that this cell division is actually a form of reproduction. Uh, for prokaryotes like bacteria cells, simply duplicating their genetic material uh, is all they have to do to reproduce, right? So they duplicate that genetic material and they split off and you go from having one unique organism uh, to having two, right? So it's just essentially a duplication. And we watched some videos of that. And I'll show you one really quickly here. Uh, and essentially what's happening with this bacteria is it's copying its genetic material and then splitting off and forming a new cell. You can actually literally see uh, the bacteria cells pinching off one another. But the important message there is that you need to be able to duplicate your genetic material first. It doesn't make much sense as an organism to duplicate if, uh, into two separate entities, the two separate organisms, if you don't first duplicate that genetic material. Because you know now from our studies in biology that uh, living things have this genetic code, this genetic material that programs their existence, right? So you need to have a full complement of genetic material to be a fully functioning organism. This is why we do uh, the cell cycle, cell division, uh, because you need to copy that genetic material before you can do any sort of um, dividing, any, before you can create another separate organism. You can also see this dividing in eukaryotes, so multicellular organisms. Uh, not, not all eukaryotes are multicellular, some of them are single cellular, but the vast majority of them are multicellular. And that video would look like this. So you start with one cell, that one cell splits off into two cells, eventually you're going to have those two cells splitting off into four cells, and so on and so forth until you get a multicellular organism. In this case, this is a sea urchin, but for, for humans it would be the exact same thing where you start off with these uh, initial cells and then you duplicate genetic material and then you just keep dividing. Okay. So again, remind yourself the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes for the test and some of the strategies that they use as, as different types of organisms uh, for cell division. Now you can't have a discussion of cell division unless you talk about the actual cell cycle. This is the process that the cell uses as it goes from one cell to two cells and as it goes from two cells to four cells and so on. Okay, so uh, this is what we're talking about, the cell cycle. The cell cycle has two phases. Okay, inner phase and the mitotic phase. So the inner phase right here, shown from here all the way till here, is the vast majority of the cell cycle, right? So the most, most of the uh, cell cycle's time is spent in inner phase. What do you do in inner phase? Well, there's three sub-phases, sub-portions of uh, interphase. The first one is called G1 or growth one phase. In this phase, the cells are going to be getting larger. The cells are going to be duplicating organelles. Okay. 
The next part of interphase is S phase. This is really important because, like I said before, if you're an organism and you're planning on essentially splitting into two, you're, if you're planning on multiplying yourself from one cell to two cells, to do that, you have to duplicate that genetic material. Otherwise, if you give that new cell portions of your genetic material, that means you're not going to have a complete set of, of genetic material any longer, and then you won't function well. So in order to give that cell a full complement of DNA necessary for life, you have to divide your set. Okay, So in S phase, all of your DNA is going to be uh, duplicated. So you go from having one set of it to having two sets of it. And you can actually see that in this picture. So there's a little bit of sort of tangled up DNA here. Then you go to this picture, and then there's a lot of tangled DNA. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into it. The third part of interphase is G2. Uh, G2 is just another growth phase. It's characterized by cell growth. The cell gets bigger. There's additional organelle duplication. But essentially, the cell is preparing for the second phase of the cell cycle. So the second phase is the mitotic cycle. And um, the mitotic phase. Mitotic phase is uh, it's the part of the cell cycle where genetic material, remember we just duplicated all that DNA. Now if we're going to split into two separate organisms or two separate cells, we need to portion out that genetic material equally so that uh, the two new cells will have equal amounts, full complements of, of DNA. So the mitotic phase, of which mitosis as a process is a part, is the part where you're going to uh, essentially divide your genetic material. So you're going to portion up the DNA into equal halves. Okay. We will get into uh, the mitotic phase, the details of the mitotic phase, the, uh, you know, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, that, that stuff in the next screencast in the next class. So don't worry about that just yet. Just get a really kind of basic understanding of what the cell cycle is and how this cycle is used to grow the cell, to duplicate the DNA, and then to eventually split that DNA in half, right? So that's the cell division part. You need to split your DNA in half. And the other thing that uh, the mitotic phase does is it uh, physically... splits into two cells, right? So you have that going from one cell to two cell in the mitotic phase. So let's get some vocabulary down. Uh, the, the vocabulary for cell division in the cell cycle is complicated because it seems like almost every word you need to know begins with a C. So it gets a little confusing, but don't worry, with a little practice, you'll be able to understand it fully, OK? The DNA at this point, at this point, and at this point. So essentially at every point in interphase is characterized as chromatin. Okay, so this is uh, thin. So I want to put not condensed. Because you remember in class we, we talked about uh, condensation. So the condensing of DNA occurring in the mitotic phase. So in interphase, it's it's not condensed at all. It's very thin, very loose. Okay, so I, you want to think of it as a ball of yarn. Because look, in this picture, it's kind of all over the place, right? Okay. In the G1, you have one set. Of DNA. Okay, so you basically have one chromosome, and that's what's being depicted here. However, your book makes the mistake of drawing it this way, and this way is is condensed. So they make the mistake of drawing it this way. I don't know why textbooks do this, but they do for whatever reason. It's actually probably better drawn as just a strand, right? So it's just a string of DNA, very loose, very non-coiled. Um, unfortunately, this picture right here is coiled, and, and that doesn't happen until mitotic phase, so, so stick with me here. But you only have one set here. In S phase, when you duplicate your DNA, you now have two sets. Okay, but we switch our vocabulary when there are two sets of chromosomes in the nucleus. And instead of calling them 
uh, chromosomes, we call them sister chromatids. Okay, so you go from having one chromosome to two sister chromatids. So this is the, the traditional drawing of the sister chromatid. So anytime you see this picture of the X-shaped uh, chromosomes, that's essentially in the future going to become two new chromosomes. But right now, they're, they're kind of joined in the middle right here at this area called the centromere. OK, so we have our two sister chromatids. And eventually, uh, these sister chromatids in mitosis are going to be pulled apart. Right, so now we're going to eventually separate these two sister chromatids into one chromosome and then into a second chromosome. Okay, so all of that, this step and this step, is going to occur in mitosis. Okay, so there's a lot of vocab there. Just practice saying it, uh, you know, practice with your friends. You have to understand that in this phase, in this phase, basically throughout interphase, it's very loose. It's not condensed. You'll only see chromosomes like this or sisters like this in uh, the mitotic phase. Okay, so they're basically going to be together until a certain part of mito mitosis when they're eventually separate, and then those sister chromatids become individual chromosomes. And we'll practice this a bunch in class, so don't worry about it if you don't get it yet. Um, we're going to practice this a lot. So get comfortable with the phases of interphase. Next time we meet, we will talk about the mitotic phase, so the various steps of mitosis. Uh, feel free to look up that YouTube video of the crazy dancing lady um, to kind of get the, uh, the catchiness of that song down. So it does teach a lot about um, about mitosis in the cell cycle, albeit in a, in a sort of insane way. But uh, we will get together and practice again, so um, make sure you get down these vocab words. And uh, maybe I'll just make a little list since I have a few minutes left. Uh, I would like you to know what sister chromatids are. Uh, what chromosomes are and define chromatin. Okay, be able to be able to place each of these vocab words, say like in a picture of uh, the cell uh, of the cell cycle like that. Okay, all right. I hope that helped. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.